welcome to UK theme parks. My name's Adam and today is the opening day of the 2021 season. Thank the Lord it seems like things are getting sort of back to normal. Sort of back to normal. And not only is it the opening day of the 2021 season, it is the opening day of Portons Park and Tornado Springs. Tornado Springs is finally open, delayed from 2020. It was supposed to open in May last year, but of course, because of the pandemic, everywhere was shut. Everywhere was shut till July, and then it wasn't really worth opening it, and it allowed the park to put some finishing touches to it. But here we are, finally. I tell you what, I've been anticipating this so much, so much. So, a quick tour from even here. I mean, as you approach the area, it is no distinguished the fact that this is a themed area. It really is something to behold. Uh, you've got the car, the welcoming tornado, if you come from that direction, which is highly unlikely you're gonna come from the left because most people are gonna come from over here. And you'll be greeted with this, the Route 83 sign on the floor, and of course, the Tornado Springs welcome just above. Now, for those that don't know, it's named Route 83 because the park opened in 1983. That's the whole reason for it. Makes perfect sense when you think about it. But look at it behold this entrance now of course one of the first rides you'll see as you walk around is owls auto academy and we'll show you some uh, shots of owls auto academy shortly but first of course the other thing you'll notice flying above your head is the storm chaser the mac spinning coaster uh, dual train as well the park have two trains for this as it whizzes around the track i cannot wait to get on this ride i cannot wait to get on this ride and of course we will be taking you on it You'll also notice as well, perhaps, maybe you won't notice straight away until it comes past, is the Grand Rio train, which goes just around the outside of Tornado Springs. We are looking to go on that as well. But of course, entering Tornado Springs, here we are. Once you enter Tornado Springs, you're greeted by the music. The music, of course, we played for you on our construction video last year. Uh, one of the first to play it. You've got Owls Auto Academy there. Look at that car, we're gonna take you in there. So there are 30 of these cars, and I'll tell you now, these are the first cars I've ever seen where the child can drive and there's a seat for the adult on the back. So you can get the real youngsters in here. Where Legoland have two different types of cars, I could be taking up quite a lot of space. You've got a large track here, you've got the same kind of car, and look, you can fit inside. That is just so cool. That is really, really so cool. Just to show you over the other side, it's nice having this viewing platform, it's lovely. So that continues over here, the track. Uh, obviously there's no one over here for some reason, but that continues over here. Let's see if anyone else comes under. Um, yeah, it just looks amazing, it really does look incredible. Here come, look, it's just all sit on the back. I think it's worth noting as well, not only are you sitting on the back, they've still got a really, really good pace to them. They're still going around quite quickly given that they've got a child and an adult on it. I've never seen it before, and you know, I have to say, it's ingenious, it's absolutely ingenious. Why would you get anything else other than that? I don't understand. I don't understand it. I genuinely don't understand it. But it works so well, and everyone is taking advantage of it. Obviously, you can see the detail and the theme in here is just magnificent, it really is. Uh, from the old car parts there on the fence, um, to, you know, the, the kind of abandoned tires and, you know, this weird glass bottle trees that are going down the back. Just really, really different. And of course, the side of the maintenance building and the um, kind of the, uh, more of the head, head offices on the side, they've got the route for uh, 83 and they've got all the owl stuff on there as well. Just looking amazing. Just looking amazing. Yeah, just can't quite get over it, to be honest with you. And this is really what you're greeted with. You can see the main path down there is pretty much where you'll come from from the entrance. So this is what you're greeted with first. So what we'll do is we're gonna take you through Al's uh, shop and service and show you some of the um, merchandise which the park have. The park actually have some proper merchandise for once. And then we'll take you in the entrance area with the big car hanging. You'll have seen that on the video last year. And we'll take you in the entrance area with the car hanging. And you'll be able to see the amazing queue for it as well. Obviously a lovely well themed shop in here and Al stop and service um, a host of things, a host of generic things as well as actually some very first hoodies and with the hoodies we also have the t-shirts and with the t-shirts we also have some wonderful little things so nice little key ring look, Tornado Springs actually I won't touch too much 
Uh, pin badge, it's great to see some pin badges at the park. Got a little torch there as well. Uh, Our stop and service, Tornado Springs, a nice little, uh, what's that, notepad. We've got the bottles. Even got a little purse there. I don't think this one's particularly themed, but that one's on there as well. Inside, just as you walk into Al's Auto Barn, the little car ride for the children. And look at this. This is what you're greeted with. A, a looking garage, a full looking garage. Oh, petrol pumps along here. You've got obviously tools. Look at the car, look. I don't know if that's real or not. I actually don't know if the car's real or not, but I have to say, it really well looks it. It really does look it. Just looking at the tires, looking underneath. I didn't go underneath of that. Literally looks like the engine's been taken out. You know, we talk about detail and we talk about kind of what parks can do to stand out from anyone else. And uh, you know, is there anything like this for a driving school? Is there anything like this you can think of? So if you're under 80 centimeters, you can't go on it. Uh, anywhere between 80 and 1.3 no problem and if you're above 1.3 i'm very sorry it's for children only unless you're accompanying of children of course the adult can sit on the back as we saw and this is our start look this is our start which is storm chaser and then look at this look we've got some flickering lights oh, it's quite dark in here actually it's remarkably dark we've got some signs on the wall and then you can see oh look at this look so this is under the Buffalo Falls. It is actually really quite cold in here, to be fair. I bet it's quite the opposite during the summer. Look at the detail. Look at the detail. Of course, Tornado Springs is based on a tornado. It sounds really stupid. So, you know, there's a little bit of destruction. There's a little bit of, um, you know, it's an old American farming town that it's been based on, uh, on Route 83. And you can see that by the theming. The theming sort of holds, you know, farming equipment, hay barrels, you've got the tractors. Um, and, you know, you've got the, the rustic wood on the walls. And you've got the rustic wood outside as well. Some old number plates on the wall. It really gives it the proper, proper American feel. It really does give it the proper American feel. I absolutely love it. But just walking through here is just amazing. I mean, it's going to be quite a long queue when you, when you get through it. And then out here, of course, there it is. There it is, there's Storm Chaser. Oh. And then all of a sudden, you're back at the entrance. But look at these details, look at the detail in there. Everywhere you look, there's a bit more detail. From the cars, look, look how fantastic the cars look. Classic Max spinning coaster, these. The cars look amazing. The groundwork, look at the finish on the ground. So you've got artificial grass down here, so they don't need to cut that, which is good, which gives the uh, impression of artificial water. But we have got very much real plants. The rock work's gone in as well. The barn on the side, it's just, a, just incredible. Genuinely incredible. And of course, the side of Buffalo Falls there, which goes up the top. And then when you look over there, just really is enclosed nicely it really is something to behold but what's the ride like well i've never been on one of these before so i'm quite interested to see what it's like but let's get up there now let's take you on board the storm chaser so here is the storm chaser station whilst it looks quite simple again theme to a barn and it does have the classic mac storage the bag storage as well which flips up you'll see that flip up as the train comes out and the next train comes in. Look at the detail, look at the detail on these trains. Oh, I absolutely love them. Car one, seat two. to go everyone in. Are we rolling it around? So what's the bag flick? Look, look, goes the bag flick. Oh, it's great to see that somewhere else. Somewhere else other than Icon. But let's take you on board. 
the storm chaser. was Storm Chaser and that was Storm Chaser after a couple of rides as well. I have to say, I mean, to be fair, it was quite busy initially and then uh, as we've kind of got through, people have dispersed around the park. So we have come back for our opinion. Amazing, honestly, incredible. And it's very different. I don't really know what I expected. I think where it's a spinning coaster, most people will automatically think of Dragon's Fury. I think it's probably the most popular one in the UK. Uh, Spinball Wizard. And perhaps you might think of the Revachon spinning coasters, a Crazy Mouse style one. But that's nothing like any of them. That is nothing like anything I've ridden in a spinning variety. And I would actually say the spin part of it is probably the least, uh, I don't know what the word to put, it's probably the least, um, the, the least important part of it. And I know it sounds silly because it's a spinning coaster, but if you're expecting to get on it and get a massive, massive spin like you do on Dragon's Fury, you're going to be a little bit disappointed because that's not what the ride's about. It's a very subtle spin, but very, very effective. So as you saw there, we went into the station, we, we showed you the station, the wonderful bag, it is a Mac coaster. It's the only Mac spinning coaster in the UK, the first of its type in the UK. So don't forget that either, it's the only one you're going to ride here at Portons Park. The theme is beautiful. We've walked through the queue line, the Storm Chaser queue line, um, which is themed to sort of uh, a barn area I guess it's gonna be a barn area this building behind us is definitely a barn 100% uh, you know with the chickens coming out of everywhere you've got the farming equipment as well and it's beautiful once inside it's beautiful the little flashy lights um, it's quite dark I do quite like the idea of it but it is quite dark to be fair but I do like the idea that you know a tornado's hit and it not all's not working as well as what it should be quite like the idea of that from here you kind of wind your way through the queue it looks like you'll always walk through the whole queue in fairness no matter how busy the park is and you come back out just here the 
before heading up the stairs and into the station. The station is actually very open. When you look at it from out here, you, you, you kind of get the first impression that it, it might not be very open. It might be quite claustrophobic. Quite the opposite. It's quite tall. It feels like a barn. It's quite open at either end. It's well sheltered and it's great to see actually there's quite a lot of shelter in Tornado Springs for uh, weather. Bear in mind it's based around obviously weather based and um, you know uh, tornadoes and potential rain and things. There's actually quite a lot of shelter and we'll show you that as we go around as well. Uh, when we walk back through the park to, to the other side we'll show you some of that. Once boarded upon the train you've got a seatbelt first. The seatbelt I imagine helps keep the uh, height restriction down so I fully understand the seatbelt and then you get the restraint that comes down on top it's very comfortable there's no doubt about the fact that it's very comfortable and even though the trains are quite wide actually the seats are quite close together but it works it works really well so you're either facing forward or backwards and that doesn't change going onto the lift hill either it doesn't really matter at what the distribution weights like it, it kind of that's the way it goes and then once you come to the top you've got a sharp right so that sharp right starts the car spinning it doesn't spin like hugely if you, again if you're expecting a mass spin that's not what it's about but it changes the direction of the car so in changing the direction of the car all of a sudden you might have been facing forward you're now facing backwards and that's kind of the theme of the ride the first part of the ride is fairly slow going uh, kind of over the tornado spring side rather than over itself it's quite slow but really it's really smooth being a mac host is really smooth once you're out of there though you drop drop a sharp right helix down and that's when it really does begin and of course the first half as well really does dictate whether you're going to be facing forwards or backwards for the rest of the ride and it's very disorientating it's very very disorientating rather than just sort of uh, you know spinning out of control where you sort of pick a uh, you know forward or back for the first half of the ride it alternates for the key elements of the ride so as you go down to the helix if you're facing backwards it's really disorientating it really makes you feel a little bit sick but not like you know not like a massive thrill ride would but it's it's really quite an incredible feeling one i've not had on a spinning coaster before to be honest with you You'll then go around the helix and you will spin slightly more so you'll come out of that and go into the next helix moving forward so again you get a completely different view a completely different feeling and you can really feel the forces really really feel the forces on you quite something really really quite something from here you go through what i would call the chicane areas of the track so out of the helix you you hit a, a left a right and a left chicane again before kind of banking back on yourselves and heading towards the station it's just insane it's an insane moment of of the ride and again it really does vary which direction you're facing you will get a little bit of spin but where the ride's so fast you know you'll hit these elements either facing forwards or backwards rather than one element forward one element backwards you know the the sharp elements as i call the first drop uh, the turnaround point um, the couple of helixes and then the chicane into the helix they'll all be taken at different rates and it makes for a really really great variety of rides i mean i've been on this quite a few times now as i said we have reflected come back out done a few rides and then um, and then gone through this and it's different every time it's different every time you can get on track and fury and uh you know whilst it's a good ride it feels a bit samey to be honest with you and even though this one's shorter i mean it's under a minute long it it has a lot of variety to it really impressed really really impressed with Storm Chaser and an absolute winner for the, undoubtedly an absolute winner for Portland's Park stunning and we've still got other rides to do other rides to do so there we have the windmill towers we're not going on the windmill towers today that seems ridiculous to be honest with you I'm not going on it however over the background there is that whopping cyclonator which you can see going around now and we'll actually stay on because you'll see I don't know if this is just starting or just finishing actually where I've just got up I think it's just starting yeah it looks like it's getting higher you'll see just how high this thing gets this isn't a uh, this isn't a kid's ride you know this is a 1.2 height restriction uh, eight years old as well and the sun is beaming the sun is beaming this afternoon down here but look at this thing
So here is the Cyclonator, the massive gyro swing ride. As we said, you can see a bit better now, sort of some of the under, undercover um, queuing. Love it, absolutely love it. Some of the detail, it's just amazing, it really is. Shoes, mobile phones, and keys. was the cyclonator ho, 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 ho. yeah i'm not wrong not wrong at all that thing has got some proper proper power to it reminds me a bit of the maelstrom at drayton manor the way it's sort of situated but i think it's a better ride i actually think that's one of the better if not the best uh, gyro swings i've been on and i know that's a bold statement but i'm shocked on how much power that's got i'm shocked by the height it goes bearing in mind this is portland's park and it's always been known for sort of you know, junior rides, to be honest with you. That is a step in a very, very different direction from the park. Now, the restraints are um, odd. I won't lie to you there. The restraint hole to get your head in is quite snug. Um, and it is quite it is quite tight to you. Just make sure when you get on it, you sit up straight and you sit with your head back and you'll be absolutely fine. It, it comes across quite nicely. Um, if you move or anything like that, it's a little bit unforgiving. So just bear that in mind once you've got on it. But there, it starts fairly slow and it sort of rocks from side to side, you know, nothing too major to be honest with you. But then all of a sudden you feel the power kick in and you can feel the power kick in and it starts to gain height. And something I didn't notice as well is that it spins from left and right, which is what a lot of them do, but it does it like continuously. So rather than going left for a bit and then right for a bit, it spins and then changes direction and changes direction back, which means you have a, a great chance, if not a guaranteed chance, of getting a high swing space in the sky or a high swing kind of coming back down. Just, yeah, again, really, really shocked. That is two fantastic rides for the UK and in particular, Paulton's Park this year. The Cyclonator there is a shocker. That's my biggest shock. That is my absolute biggest shock so far today 
is that thing. That thing moves, moves really, really quick. Thoroughly impressed, thoroughly impressed. Do not think it's a children's ride, it's not. Now over here we have the Refeam Trekking Tractors. We are gonna take you on the Refeam Trekking Tractors. Um, some of they are still going to have a little garden bits here. They're still being sort of uh, worked out and being grown in, so they'll be on shortly as well. But that's had a complete refresh again. It's all been barned. I mean, look at the scenery; it just looks amazing. We've got water features, got little animals around there as well. And another thing we did say is, uh, in addition, is the amount of shelter. So you can see here the amount of queuing shelter that you've got for the windmills. And I don't know if you can see from here as well, over the back, you've got some blue as well. You've got quite a lot of queuing shelter at the Cyclonator as well as completely underground for um, Storm Chaser. So the major rides here all have queuing systems under cover, or certainly a lot of it under cover, which is great news, particularly as we don't currently know at the moment whether or not Tornado Springs will be open for the Christmas period. At the moment, Lost City, Lost City, Lost Kingdom stays open for the Christmas period. Velociraptor has its maintenance just before, but kind of joins in at the end of November and Flight of the Pterosaur does, whereas the rides Cobra, Edge and Magma uh, all close for the winter period. It'd be interesting to see whether this is open. I don't know what the maintenance is like on Storm Chaser and whether or not that could shut on November 1st, roughly when the park shut and be closed until Christmas. I don't know. I don't know, same with the Cyclonator. Uh, my guess would be this won't be open for Christmas. The sheer scale and size, I would imagine that's quite a, um, a quite a maintenance ride, but I don't know, and we don't know quite yet. But being next to Peppa Pig World over the back there, uh, we're not going into Peppa Pig World today, by the way. Being next to Peppa Pig World over the back there, it'd be really interesting to see whether or not you know this is open as well as Lost Kingdom or instead of Lost Kingdom, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, believe it or not, Tornado Springs is getting an expansion in 2022, which is the new ride behind us. This is themed, or going to be themed, to a crop duster farmyard flyer. I mean, honestly, I cannot believe already we are getting an expansion to it. And you can see how it's coming along. You can see the station is all in there already. Um, you can see some footers, obviously the uh, van's here, but you can see some footers. You can see the top of the barn is already looking like a barn. It's only April, it's only April. That will definitely take shape before the end of the year and we'll get a better view of that uh, as it's built as well. And you can get a really good view of that from outside the park as well. But yeah, new ride, new ride already coming to Tornado Springs next year. Now we're not gonna go on the water towers, but we are gonna go around now and take you on the trekking tractors.
So here is the parked old Trek in tractors ride again. It's been completely redone, completely rethemed. We did see quite a lot of this last year. We could get quite close to this last year. But you'll see as well, they've done the road. So the road sort of goes right the way through to the other part of Tornado Springs. Uh, the hay barn, the food outlet we ate in there last year. That was really nice. Ride photos as well for the Buffalo Falls. It just looks fantastic. It looks fantastic. And of course, as you then come around here, all of a sudden, You're in the area that sort of kicked it all off. Peppa Pig. Now we're not gonna do any filming in Peppa Pig today. I don't have the kids with me today. But yeah, Peppa Pig. Will probably still be the most popular area of the park, to be perfectly honest with you. We're gonna walk on through now and go and see some other rides. Whilst we don't want to do a lot of filming in here, just look how fresh they've made these. Now, one thing you can say about Portons is you can notice the difference between sort of the older rides and the newer rides. So there's the pirate ship there, beautifully coloured, um, well looked after, as you'd expect from Portons. This is where the old junior drop towers used to be. Over to um, the teacups and the Contiki ride, just around the corner as well, the Viking boats. So this is obviously an unthemed area. This is what we would call an unthemed area. And this is pretty much how Paulton, and to be fair, a lot of theme parks in the country still run with. You know, outside of uh, uh, Merlin, to be fair, it's get a new ride, put a, put a basic fence around it, um, stick a sign up and, and job done. And of course, this is where Paulton's is changing because Paulton's is taking these rides and they're refurbishing them and they're giving them a theme and they're completely changing everything. So these rides aren't part of areas. Whereas, you know, you've seen Peppa Pig World, Lost Kingdom, Critter Creek just up there. We're going to go into it in a minute. And of course, Tornado Springs. These are just the, the backup rides. And there's nothing wrong with them. Nothing wrong with the rides at all. And of course, you know, as we said, look how well looked after it is. The fence is perfect. Um, the teacups are perfect. There's no paint coming off anywhere. It just looks absolutely incredible. And the same with the Contiki ride. Look at it. It's just gleaming. Absolutely gleaming. But I think now the park would probably theme these up. You know, I, I think I'm sure a long-term plan for the park is to take some of these rides and add a theme to them. So as we've seen, particularly over in Lost Kingdom, there's a couple of rides there, the little sort of magic carpet, uh, basic temple heights, and that used to be located at the, um, uh, by the log flume. So that, that got moved into there. The dino chase, which is in there now, was just a basic coaster, which was in there. So they have taken rides, previous rides, and added them in. Buffalo Falls, of course, into Tornado Springs, as well as Trekking Tractors. So yeah, they, you know, they, they don't just buy new rides. They're not just buying new rides. They're taking rides they've got, rides they've looked after really, really carefully, re-theming them and adding them into the new areas, which is fantastic. Really is. Fairly recently re-themed area, again maintaining the rides that were here, uh, pretty much maintaining the rides that are here, is Critter Creek. So you can see the old Stinger ride here, which is now the Caterpillar, the old train over there as well which has stayed, and what was the Wind in the Willows walkthrough is now the, um, the burrow, which is full of uh, little sort of reptiles and insects and things. But again, this was completely re-themed. It's repainted. You can actually see a little bit of paint peeling through it. It's very rare. But look at this though. It's completely redone. Looking really colorful. The ship was done at the front as well. Um, it's all been sort of, um, you know, new, new scenery on the top, new scenery in the middle. I mean, these are like eccentric bugs. Really sort of zany. Just adds, just adds little bits to the coaster. But this is one of the most popular, or certainly was the most popular, uh, you know, roller coaster at the park, right the way up to the Cobra opening. And the Cobra opening, I think now with uh, Velociraptor and Flight the Pterosaur, I would think Flight the Pterosaur was probably the next coaster. Don't quote me on that. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think. And then failing that, I think now it's probably Storm Chaser. But yeah, the detail, the detail's amazing. I love the models. I just don't know who thinks of this. You know, we said earlier on that, granted, what made the park was the IP, was Peppa Pig. Undoubtedly, Peppa Pig changed the direction of the park, doubled attendance, it, it really skyrocketed. But from then, they've gone, no, we could take an easy route and stay with the IPs, but instead, you know, they've gone back to the drawing board, they've come up with completely original ideas, 
and it's worked amazingly. Away from the Tornado Springs area now we start at the other end of the park. We'll come back down to the other end of the park which is home to Cobra which you can see behind me. Um, is also home to the Edge and of course Magma the Drop Tower over there. It's actually quite busy down here now. I think a lot of people have made their way as the day's gone on and kind of drifted over to this side. Now Cobra is open. Um, I'm going to try and get on that surely. It does have quite a long queue to be honest with you. However Edge is not open. I think this is the first time I've ever been to Portland's Park where um, one of the advertised rides isn't open for opening day. Genuinely, first time I think I've seen it. There's Cobra in the background. But we're going to take you on board, hopefully take you on board this. We're going to go on Magma as well. Obviously Magma, very uh, similar, same to Croc Drop, which is open at Chesington World of Adventures this week also. We will be checking that out. However, we can take you on board this one, so we will do. But yeah, no edge. Now let me just take you around here, because this is, this is actually quite interesting. Now you obviously normally scratch around and try and find uh, what's going on, but this is as honest as you like. So we're very sorry, but due to a problem with the motor, Edge is currently closed. Unfortunately, external factors mean we're unlikely to receive a new motor from Zamperla until June. So rather than the rides close, Portons Park have made a sign, completely listed it, uh, got it all out here and told us exactly what the problem is. Not that they have to, but told us exactly what the problem with the Edge. So sadly no edge today because that is uh, the better of the two mega discos we've got in the UK. But we do have Cobra and of course over in the background as well you'll see, we're going to head over there in a second, but you'll see Flight the Pterosaur which has changed colour. Can you spot it? It used to have brown track, it's now got green. So of course this isn't very old, it's not a very old ride but we've just walked through it on the way through and it just looks, oh, honestly, the park, we've said it before, and Tornado Springs you'll have seen from early on, just looks amazing. It really does look amazing. You know, is this now the best family park we got in the UK? Well, yeah, I think it is. I think it is. And you think that, I think in a couple of years, they're coming down to sort this area out and make it more themed. We're not far away now. We're not far away now at all. But Tornado Springs looks amazing. Lost Kingdom looks amazing. You know, Peppa Pig World, yeah, it just really blends together really nicely and the detail is um, you know it's just st stunning 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 detail and the paint job to repaint that after a couple of years i don't know what to say let's see if we can get on some rides i do love the fact that the new rides have times queue times although there are queue boards we don't actually know how long the queue is for cobra we still don't know how long the queue is for cobra so we're just just sort of have to sort of make our way round and hope for the best. So yeah, the Gers, uh, the Gers ride here. Again, quite a unique coaster actually. In fairness, oh the queue's not that big. That's all right. Quite a unique coaster in fairness. Cobra time.
ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਈ ਗਈ So there is Magma, the park's drop tower, or larger drop tower, now we have the little towers down in Tornado Springs, but this is the uh, larger tower. As you can see, this has all been redone as well, this has all been repainted um, for this season, looking really, really fresh. As we walk around it, the sign as well, there's a lovely entrance, a lovely little themed one, this one. Obviously we've got barriers up for distancing, they've got very clear actually, very clear yellow markers on the floor for anyone wondering um yeah you can't really go wrong with it but lovely little tower lovely little tower and of course there's a couple of these around but yeah it rides really well to be honest i really wasn't ready for that my stomach wasn't ready for that as we kind of approach and come into the uh, 2021 season i won't lie to you yeah, I wasn't ready for the drop tower. Wasn't ready for the drop tower. But that's a great ride. Cobra's a great ride as well. And we're going to make our way back over the other side of the park. Um, stopping next at Velociraptor. And then we're going to go to Flight of the Pterosaur. Looks a very slightly different shade. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure it used to be far more brown than this. But as you can see, Flight of the Pterosaur has gone a little bit more greeny. A little bit more greeny. Um, there's not much of a queue for this this afternoon. Hardly anyone at all. And it's a fantastic family roller coaster. It really is genuinely a fantastic family roller coaster. When you think this is more of a modern day sort of. Um, uh, you know, vampire style ride, little suspended coaster. Uh, it's got the newer cars on, they don't swing as much by any means, but it's a lovely ride. And of course, we're going to be aiming for back seat. When you can get a back seat on this, coming off the top of that lift hill, it's very, very special. Very special, absolutely love it. It really, you know, again, for a, a family junior ride, it really drags you off, like, genuinely, it drags you off the top get into a better position here we'll see it going round look at that but it maintains a fantastic pace as it goes round as we disappear off to the other side of the ride but yeah that's Velociraptor done and now it's time to go on a flight of the pterosaur we're going to do our best to try and get a back seat and of course we'll take you on board
You can see Flight of the Pterosaur there passing through its final turn. I've just been on that, and yes, we got a back row. Back row on that ride, I'm afraid, is the only place to be. The absolute only place to be. But looking fantastic. The sun's coming out as well. Always good when the sun starts to come out. Just brighten things up, doesn't it? It just makes things look so much better. Now then, we're going to walk down here uh, through the gardens, and we actually need to go... I actually need to go back to the car because I forgot my charger. We're going to skip Dino um, Jeeps today. It's open. The, uh, the Dinosaur Toe uh, Talk uh, Co. is open today, but we're not going to go on that today. If you want to see that, there's plenty of POVs on the channel from it from previous visits to Portland's Park, so be sure to check those out. But again, you know, when the sun comes out and you can see the blue skies, the detail, the fountain, the aeroplane, it just does look amazing, really does. And of course, that's got its own little storyline to it as well. And as we pan back over Lost Kingdom, probably for the final time today, to be honest. It's staggering to think that this was really Portals Park's first real themed area, and I mean real themed area. And then from this, they've redone the Caterpillar area uh, for the, the Critter Creek. And then they've, you know, they've done um, an expansion to Peppa Pig World as well. And then, of course, they've done Tornado Springs. And I know Peppa Pig, the original Peppa Pig, was a well-themed area, I get that. But it was themed around Peppa Pig in the nicest way possible. It's themed around an IP, which makes it a real easy target for theme parks and things. And of course, I understand why the park did it, because it's one of the most popular IPs in the world. And it has undoubtedly led us to where we are now in having what we have at the park. I think without Peppa Pig, Portland's Park wouldn't have any of this. Just wouldn't have any of it. But all this is from the imagination of the park. Critter Creek, Lost Kingdom, and of course, Tornado Springs is all from the imagination of the park. Heading back towards Tornado Springs. Now, we didn't actually film when we came down here earlier. We were in such a rush to uh, get to Tornado Springs that we just sort of headed straight for the area without doing any filming. But something we did notice is obviously these are um, mass pumpkin patches during the Halloween period and certainly last time we were here these were full of pumpkins but look how many daffodils they get hey, why are you wearing my scarf? you've got all of these here all of these over here more over there and they're still fairly much in sort of coming to the end of season now that's just beautiful it's a beautiful little entrance yeah. I actually can't believe how many there are I'm not sure I don't know if I've been here in spring I think we came in May last time for the Lost Kingdom opening. We probably missed the uh, missed the flowers in bloom. But yeah, lovely little welcome to the park. Really is. And of course, as we said in the video earlier, this is the way you're likely to approach Tornado Springs with Al's Auto Academy here, the driving school. And as we can see, I just love it. Is Cody small enough to go in one of these? I think the question is going to be, or the answer is going to be, no, he's not. He's not going to be small enough. But how good does it look? Little bits of theming. Just looks so, so good. And this is your welcome. This is your welcome to Tornado Springs. There's no entrance around this side. And also, as we said earlier, there are queue time boards. Just need a few more signs around would uh, help on some of the other rides. But other than that... And then, of course, back over to tornado springs so i'm gonna head in I need to do cyclonator again i want to do storm chaser again and it's it's kind of approaching the end so once i've done those i'm gonna head on the grand rio train uh, which has been rerouted for this year which comes around here and that's near enough a day near enough a day and i'll tell you what it's been a really easy day as well at portland's park Storm Chaser comes around the top. Look at that, just love it. Just love it. So out the sharp corner, and you'll see they don't spin very much, as we said earlier. And then as you drop into this, this is kind of the part. That sharp turn there spins the cars very little, but then as you come around here, you'll see them spin as you hit this second helix down. And then this little chicane bit here, it's just insane. Love it, absolutely love it. And of course, gonna get something to eat as well. So I think actually before we do anything, 
Let's head into uh, Jesse's Diner. I'm sure it was going to be called Jesse's Diner. It's now called the Route 83 Diner. But we're going to head into Route 83 Diner and get something to eat. So here is the new diner, the wonderful new diner. Now obviously we can't sit indoors at the moment um, because of social distancing rules and regulations that there's no indoor eating or restaurants, but just to show you the booths, some nice looking tables. And it's quite a fair size in here as well, to be fair. You can see the dessert trolley is over there uh, with collections as well. Back down the other end, we'll show you shortly, they had self-service. I've used the self-service today, just waiting. Got some wonderful signs on the wall, look. Jesse's Quality Diner. The music sounds better with you. These are lovely boobs, these are. Classic retro, retro Pepsi Cola, because this is a Pepsi Cola park. Lovely, lovely. I mean, the theming, to be fair, is... I can't think of a better restaurant. Leave me in, leave your comments below. Can you think of a better restaurant than this? For look and style. So whilst we look at these little decorations, at the order here over there, there are five self-service. Low one at the end as well for disabled users. Collection of menu on here. They are running a reduced menu at the moment, I have to say. I don't know what's missing. Maybe I'll see some barbecue ribs or something. For $8.95 is the uh, hot dog meal that comes with a choice of drink. Gone for Pepsi Max today. Um, that's quite a big hot dog actually, I can't. I can't really think we've had one that big before. Uh, it comes with curly fries as well, but that is from Jesse's Diner, the restaurant here. So obviously, as we said when we were in there, you can't eat inside at the moment. They have moved some of the tables outside. However, um, Tornado Springs is really, really busy today. Everyone is down here. So park bench it is. Another spin on the rather impressive cyclinator, I have to say. It's got some power, definitely got some power. Really, really impressed with that. And that's kind of nearly drawing us to a close here at Portons Park. Um, we've done cyclinator, I've done Storm Chaser. I don't know how many times I've done Storm Chaser. I haven't got bored of it, but we do want to go around and try and get on the train since it's re-theme, it's gonna take us through Tornado Springs. So it'll give us some slightly different views, I would guess. Um, to what it gave beforehand. I think beforehand you had a lot of nothing, whereas now you won't get that, so it'll be really, really good. I haven't really looked at Buffalo Falls today because obviously it was re-themed last year. There it is. Again, how to make good of an older ride. Best thing to do, re-theme it. And it looks, it looks spectacular, it really does. It fits the area so, so well. So quick wander through Peppa Pig World, out to the train, and we'll see you once we're on board. So here we are on the Rio Grande. And as you can see, this has been completely refurbished, this train, complete with audio as well. However, it's gonna give us a really unique view of Tornado Springs. So we're not gonna do a full on ride, you'll be pleased to hear. We are literally just um, gonna show you the Tornado Springs part of it, which is what we see here. So you can see the back there of Buffalo Falls, which was rethemed and sort of in place last year. And of course, we're going to come around to Storm Chase. And the first thing we're going to pass is this lovely scenery. Lovely, lovely scenery. I love this. And there's a really nice water effect as well, which has been turned on for this year. Uh, my guess was it was all here last year, but you just couldn't see it. Even the lights are on on the car, look. But there's the water effect. Close farm. And this is the closest we've been able to get. So you can even see the scenery on the inside with the hay bales. Uh, which you, you can't, you don't really notice on the ride to be honest with you and you can't see from outside but you can see from here. Looking lovely and this chicane area here, this is mad, absolutely mad that piece of track there. Really really love it and the scenery of the uh, 
the rails goes all the way down as well you can't necessarily see that from the other side railway station we won't be stopping there you can see it's going up now yeah that's what we like so a little bit of cattle weird bit of theme in that i won't lie to you it is a weird bit looks quite uh quite good from this side again i don't really spot it on the ride to be honest with you really don't spot it on the ride got the windmills which seem to be quite symbolic around here there's quite a few windmills we've seen there's the lift look at that look at the junction the lift hill and of course the station as well here heading over to Pepper Pig World so yeah that is Tornado Springs that is the new view you get of Tornado Springs you can see the railway as we go backwards real different view to what we had last time on here when there was just sort of bushes down here there was bushes this side you couldn't really see a lot in fact there it is completely different view as we finish off looking at the trekking tractors Paulton's Park, Paulton's Park 2021 is now open and it's open with Tornado Springs. And what an afternoon, what an afternoon. It just feels like relentless riding upon riding upon riding upon riding upon riding. Obviously the task of the day was to go on uh, Storm Chaser and the Cyclonator, both open. To be fair, we've seen very relative problems today as well at the park. Uh, Cyclonator had a, had a little bit of downtime, not seen any problems with Storm Chaser at all. The Max Spinner is very disorientating. It's got some highlight fast spots, better than any other. And the way it spins, as we said in our review, completely different. And it being completely different offers a much better variety of ride, I think, than the spinners we've got, to be honest, than the Maro spinners, um, or indeed the Revachon ones. You can get some real disorientating moments on that spinner, and that's what I want. That's what I want from it. The Cyclonator, oh, oh dear. Honestly, the power of that Cyclonator is something else. And I'm sure it's not run you know to kind of go maximum height as quickly as it can it does seem to start quite you know slowly which is how i would run it to be honest and then it just sort of kicks in and up it goes and where it's rotating left and right at this you know it, it, kind of alternately rather than just like one way and then another way it does it continuously you get a real real spin on it a real real good spin on it something very very special so so impressed with the cyclinator it's got some height it's got the power it's got the spin you get you know full moments high you get full moments coming down and let's not forget the area tornado springs is stunning absolutely stunning it lives up to the hype um, and it lives up probably to the expectation that myself and many enthusiasts i know it's not just for the enthusiasts gave it given the quality of the critter creek reef theme pepper pig world and of course lost kingdom is Portland's Park the best family park in the UK? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I think it is. I think Tornado Springs has tipped them over with a new ride coming next year, a potential new ride coming the year after, a re-theme, um, you know, coming shortly after that, of that bottom end. Portland's Park is running at a completely different level to anything else we've got. The Storm Chaser throughput is brilliant. The Cyclonator throughput is brilliant. Some real thoughts gone into it. Some real thoughts gone into Portons Park and it's paid off and I loved it. But my name's Adam, this has been UK Theme Parks from Portons Park and the opening date of the 2021 season. We'll see you soon.